Let's be honest, Zoom native whiteboard is suboptimal, to be polite. The user interface feels like 2015 and functionalities are quite limited. But with Zoom apps, Zoom made a smart move. Instead of making a new whiteboard, they decided to rely on some of the market leaders. In this video, I review the whiteboards that are available as Zoom apps. Miro, Mural, Lucid Spark, and one that I didn't know so far. And I'll tell you why I think, spoiler alert, Miro is the one of choice. I won't be reviewing all the whiteboards in detail, as for that, I have another video that I'll link in the description below. But I'll focus on the use that we can make of the whiteboards in Zoom. Do you have to register, can you save the whiteboard, can you have participants collaborate, and more. So let's go and install Miro. Let's start by installing the Miro app. You can do that from your Zoom client or, as I'm doing now, from within a meeting. Click on Apps, then Discover, and select the Miro app. Click on Add, and in the browser window, then select Add the Miro app to Zoom. Review the conditions and if you're happy, then click on Authorize. The Miro app is now installed. Click on Open. And now we have two options. We can create a board without registration or sign in to a Miro account. The fact that we can create a board without registration is a great move by Miro, as it makes the board available to anyone and in return will address many new users who after a while may end up paying for a subscription. Using the Miro board without registration comes though with some limitations. The first one is that the board will be deleted after 24 hours. If you want to save it, you have to sign in. Also, the available functions are limited, but still they're good enough to start whiteboarding. So putting it on a scale, using Miro without registration is quick, but has limited features and doesn't allow to save the board. The next step is signing up to Miro with a free account. You have more features available and you can save up to three boards. The next level is using Miro with a paid subscription, where you can save unlimited boards and have all the features available. In this video, I will be using Miro without registration. I'm running a Zoom meeting from a MacBook Pro where I have installed the latest Zoom version with apps. I'm logged into the meeting also with another account from a PC where I haven't updated to the latest Zoom version and where Zoom apps are not available. If I click on Send, participants who have not installed the apps would not receive any message. However, I can still share the board with them via screen share and by clicking the Share button. The fact that there are many people who don't have the apps feature enabled yet is an issue for those who want to use apps. And if you want to know more about this, check out my considerations in this video that I'm linking in the description. So how can we best use Miro on Zoom? The first and simplest use case is where the facilitator shares content and doesn't require the contribution of the audience. In this case, using Miro without registration is a great alternative to the Zoom whiteboard that honestly is way more primitive than the Miro board. Facilitators can show their board, for example, for a recap activity or graphic facilitation or to annotate ideas that come from the audience. In the second case, Miro can be used in a team meeting where we know that everyone has access to the app. For example, if a company has approved the use of Zoom apps, then the facilitator can send the app to participants by clicking on Send and have them collaborating simultaneously on the board. It's a best practice to make sure that everyone can access the app before the meeting. You can use Miro for group activities like brainstorming or a weekly update. In the third case, facilitators can use the Miro board outside of their team, with a group of participants that you are unsure whether they have the app installed or not you can still send the app to the whole group and those who have the apps feature enabled will be able to install the app or use it if they already have installed it. However, make sure that you always share the link in the chat for those who don't have access to Zoom apps. In fact, Miro can be accessed also via web browser and you can copy the URL by clicking on share board. Each of these three cases require a different level of competence by the stakeholders involved in the meeting. In the first case, the facilitator is sharing the board via screen share. The facilitator should master all features of Miro. And if you're considering handwriting or doing graphic facilitation, then you should be working with the drawing pad and stylus. In the second case of doing a complex group activity in a team, then the facilitator should still master the board. However, also the other participants should be able to proficiently use Miro. As a facilitator, you can always provide instructions, but if participants are new, then I would suggest running a session to demo the tool and let them become comfortable with it. 
In the third case, where as a facilitator you basically don't know your audience, or at least their whiteboarding skills, then my recommendation is to keep it simple. Writing text or adding a note seem to be very simple and straightforward activities. However, you shouldn't underestimate the fact that many people get confused. And if they struggle, they get frustrated. And if they get frustrated, you lose them. If you have a mirror account, it's good practice to prepare your board in advance. But anyway, even if you open it on the spot during a meeting, make sure you limit your audience interaction to one or two very simple tasks. When you're using Miro without registration, the board will be deleted in 24 hours. However, you can export it as an image or as a PDF. After a couple of times you use the board without registration, you probably start wondering, why am I not signing up with a free account? And I totally agree. If you like Miro, just create a free account and start working with three boards. Besides saving the board, you'll also have access to more board functions. So go give it a try. The second whiteboard I'm going to review is Mural. Mural is probably Miro's biggest competitor. But let's see how the two apps compare. Different from Miro, Mural doesn't allow to use the app without registration. So you have to sign in. But I already subscribed a couple of months ago and my free trial has expired. Mural has no free plan. After the free trial, either you pay for a subscription or you don't use Mural. For me, this is a big limitation. And I think that Mural will lose many new users that will opt for Miro. So for me, big deception, Mural is not a valid option, unless you already have a Mural paid subscription. The third app I'm reviewing is LucidSpark. Similar to Miro, LucidSpark has a free plan where you can save up to three boards and you have access to limited functions. Different from Miro, you can't use it without registration. I think LucidSpark is a good alternative to Miro, even if for me it's less visually appealing, but that's subjective. All in all, I think it's a good whiteboard for Zoom. It doesn't allow use without registration, but you can create a free account. The last whiteboard Zoom app is Draw with Scribble Together Whiteboard. Honestly, I didn't know about this software before looking into Zoom apps, but I decided to give it a try. You have to sign up for a free trial that actually lasts only three days. After that, you will have to pay for a subscription. It's reasonably cheap, but let's see what it offers. Functions are very, very basic. Laser highlighting, bomb eraser, drawing tool, changing color, and undo. The canvas is limited on the side, but you can scroll down. And here I'm writing with my finger on mobile. That's it, you can't do much more than that. So even though it's relatively cheap, I don't see it worthwhile, at least for me. If you have a different opinion, please let me know in the comments. I hope you got some good information out of this video. If you want to support my channel, please consider subscribing. What you can do for you right now is to watch one of these two videos. In the first one, I'm sharing why I think you should be careful when using Zoom apps. The second one is a review of another best Zoom app, Mentimeter. See you in my next digital tip.